Welcome everyone. Thanks for everyone for showing up tonight. My name is Jesse Taylor and I'm a program advisor at BCIT. Myself and my colleagues uh, primarily assist clients inquiring towards full-time programs. However, we also have a group within our department that is dedicated to assisting students specific to inquiries for part-time studies programs. So tonight's session will be primarily focused on full-time studies options. Um, and other sessions that will take place uh, with more specific to those wishing to pursue or learn more about options involved for part-time studies. To the next slide, there we go. Before we proceed with tonight's session, I would first like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people, which include the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. I would like to highlight this year's view book as one of my first slides. Um, this, this view book can now be found on the website as well as on campus if you happen to be visiting uh, one of our campuses, especially the Burnaby campus at this point. Uh, this booklet should help with those involved with their initial exploration of options available at BCIT before reviewing the full details on the website and inquiring further. It's a good starting point. As well, I wanted to mention that BCIT will be hosting an on-campus Big Info session. Uh, so we've been without doing this on campus for a couple of years because of the pandemic, uh, but it's great to be back for it. And so for those wishing to speak with program representatives directly, uh, this will be a great opportunity, especially if you're, again, still in that initial selection process, uh, trying to decide what program or what pathway to proceed with. So that session is scheduled for Wednesday, October 5th from 4 till 6.30 p.m. As well, a virtual version of this session will be also scheduled for the middle of next month. I believe it's the 17th. And so you can reference that on the website at bcit.ca within the uh, Big Info session link uh, if you scroll down. So I do really appreciate the opportunity to speak with everyone attending this session for this virtual session uh, and to share information with you regarding BCIT programs the admissions processes, entrance requirements, as well as services offered. I hope that the details covered will be useful to each attendee in the journey towards their post-secondary education. I'd also like to mention that I'm joined by a colleague or two that should be available to assist with questions during and after the session. And when the details uh, from researching on the website, they don't necessarily clarify all the information that you're seeking, Certainly feel free to post specific questions into that chat um, to have my colleagues respond or follow up with us after the session. I also recommend that you do listen to the full presentation. Uh, certainly we'll be providing a wealth of information that will has the potential to answer questions that you might have. Um, and certainly when considering this, it's certainly recommended that attendees wait to the question and answer period. So we will have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Um, so that we can make sure that we address as many questions as possible. Um, so certainly common questions hopefully will be responded to or, or you'll have information within the session that will uh, cover things with that respect. Moving along, I want to talk about BCIT. So what really sets BCIT apart uh, from other institutions can be summed up in two words, uh, applied learning. So polytechnic institutions such as BCIT combine theoretical education with practical skills training. In summary, this essentially means students learn by doing, or put, by putting them putting the theory that they learn to practice. As well, students learn from instructors who are industry experienced, often experts in their field, as well as students have the chance to network with industry leaders and take on projects designed by local and international employers. Throughout this presentation, you'll see images of our students that are gaining real world, ex real, real world experience uh, needed for their future careers. And if you're wondering why BCIT graduates are so successful, um, it is because of the practical experience that is gained within their programs. This is also one of the reasons why Amanda Gomez, who you can see in the slide on the ladder in the image there, uh, chose to study civil engineering at BCIT. Let's come out of the next slide here. So BCIT operates across five main campuses in and around Vancouver. The largest campus in BCIT 
sorry, for BCIT is the Burnaby campus, which is home to hundreds of specialized learning spaces, which include broadcast studios, green roofs, energy grids, forests and waterways. The majority of BCIT programs are offered out of the Burnaby campus. So it is a key campus in your future, potentially options that you choose. Moving along, we also have our state-of-the-art aerospace technology campus, uh, which is located in Richmond. Uh, this is home to BCIT's aerospace programs. The campus is centered on a 400, sorry, 40,000 square foot hangar, housing our fleet of aircraft and helicopters. And at this campus, we offer the commercial pilot program, as well as programs for aircraft mechanics, electronics, and aviation management and operations. As we move to the downtown core, we have our downtown campus, which is located in Vancouver's Business and Technology Core. Uh, it is home to the state-of-the-art technology education collaboration or tech hub. And many of our business courses are offered from the downtown campus, as well as some of our computing programs. And the programs at this campus are integrated with on-site industry projects, applied research, as well as entrepreneurship. The Marine Campus for BCIT is located in North Vancouver. It's the center of training for the maritime industry in Western Canada. At this campus, BCIT offers programs in navigation, marine engineering, seamanship, and maritime safety and security. The Marine Engineering Program, as an example, contains a paid co-op that takes place at sea as part of the program. With bridge and engine room simulators and an indoor pool, students gain experience with realistic scenarios and a safe environment. So making sure that before they go out to sea, they've, they've done this uh, many a times in an enclosed uh, setting. And on to Anastas Island. So we do have our, our final campus uh, located in Delta uh, on Anastas Island. Uh, this facility trains heavy duty mechanics, transport trailer mechanics, diesel mechanics, commercial transport mechanics, as well as railway conductors and forklift operators. As we get into the next slide, uh, I wanna mention that there are a lot of people that are aware that BCIT is associated with trades training. There's no doubt about that, it's a big thing at BCIT, but we offer recognized and accredited studies in many different areas. Uh, BCIT delivers programs and courses uh, to students through six main areas of study. Uh, the first of the six areas is the Applied and Natural Sciences, uh, referenced in the slide, uh, where we have over 30 programs uh, as options that could be explored. And the career paths are incredibly diverse. Uh, for example, you could take a program to become a sustainable resource manager, get involved in nautical sciences as an officer with the NAT, a uh, public health inspector, or even a provincial park range. As well, we offer the most comprehensive forensic science programs in Canada. Forensics is an example of an advanced program requiring post-secondary education. So typically you're not gonna be coming straight out of high school if you went to that, if you need other education or experience first. And but many programs at BCIT accept applicants directly from high school, uh, but others do have post-secondary requirements such as this one uh, or these options. Um, or sometimes it's just simply a preference for post-secondary studies uh, prior to competing for entry to the program. So we'll talk that, about that a little bit later. Um, uh, with specifics of, of some of the, the details about the admissions process and applying to different programs uh, and touching into some of the requirements potentially. Oops, I could skip a slide there, no. Uh, BCIT Business and Media School is one of the largest in Western Canada. Uh, we have programs that lead to professional designations in accounting, human resource, financial planning, and project management, just to name a few. Graduates have the knowledge and hands-on experience to tackle challenging business scenarios, experience gained through industry projects that are incorporated into our programs and that students work on in teams to mimic the real world. Many of our diploma programs and business ladder into our Bachelor of Business Administration. Our recognized business degree, which can be completed full-time or part-time. And this pattern is typical of many BCIT programs. So the ability to be able to start with a diploma and then ladder into a degree is quite common. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later or try and answer your questions about that specifically. BCIT's computing and IT grads are shaping the tech industry online and around the world. 
building the gains and applications that we use daily, running the IT networks that connect us globally, and protecting many people in areas such as privacy against cyber threats uh, or other things on a continuous basis. The largest provider of computing diploma graduates in BC is from DCIT, and the Institute has the largest selection of part-time IT courses in the province. As an example, students of the Computer Systems Technology Diploma, which has a focus on programming, are often hired directly out of the program. And that program also ladders into the degree program options. Um, so you've got games development as well as network security, uh, which are two of the options uh, that are available, uh, but there's several more uh, that are offered. Those are the two that are typically offered, I believe, on a full-time basis, and then there's others that are offered on a part-time basis. BCIT also offers innovative degree and diploma options in various areas of engineering, accredited training in mechanical, electrical, civil, and mining, and mineral resource engineering can also put individuals on a path to become a professional engineer. Our programs are typically accredited with professional associations as well. And in most cases, applicants will be applying to a diploma to start with, as that is the entry level of study, and as individuals progress, they may aim to pursue a degree or they might work as a technologist upon completion uh, from the diploma before they consider what their next step would be. So some will obtain a ex work experience and then they'll come back to complete a degree uh, over several years. And one of the best things about BCIT is simply the choice to create a pathway uh, such as that. BCIT offers in-depth and a great breadth of health education programs unmatched by other post-secondary institutions from within the health sciences area. Whether someone wants to help with urgent care in a hospital or specialize in a prevention-based field, learning by using simulation technology and practicing essential skills in real clinical settings is how students will proceed within these programs. All of our health science programs have a heavy focus in clinical training whether you're studying to become an X-ray or ultrasound technologist, a registered nurse, or within one of the many other programs. Uh, this is a main reason that accounts for the graduate placement rate of oftentimes 100% or certainly close to it for many of our health science programs. <clears throat> and finally, choosing BCIT for trades training means having access to the best equipment and instructors in the province, from jets, ships, and heavy equipment, to cutting edge automotive welding and carpentry shops. Being well recognized by employers for trades training, both from the pre-apprenticeship foundation programs and the apprenticeship technical training options. If you're unsure which one is the right pursuit, the option would exist uh, to explore and experience the trades through the trades discovery program. This program is also offered specifically uh, for women, so trades discovery for women program option. And within the trades discovery program, students get hands-on experience in a variety of trades to then assist in having them decide which program to pursue uh, as a foundation or otherwise uh, pursue within the field. So another great feature of BCIT is the small class sizes and team-based learning approach. The full-time programs are taught in cohorts and essentially a cohort is a small group of students who learn and work on projects together throughout their studies. This is unlike most universities or colleges where students are typically gonna end up in different lecture halls with different groups of individuals. At BCIT students start the studies with a group of students and continue uh, within the program with that same group. Uh, so students get a chance to build stronger relationships with their classmates as well as with their instructors. And oftentimes those instructors have commonly come from industries so that bringing them a great experience uh, for them to learn from. The programs are also connected with the alumni networks in industry. Uh, so that's to say that previous students who are now working in industry have that ability to reconnect with the current students. Learning in a cohort also provides an ex the experience of teamwork and group project management, uh, skill sets which are commonly essential competencies for the workplace. So we're trying to make sure that the students are covering that while they're attending at BCIT before they move on uh, to the work field. A helpful spot on the website to start researching BCIT programs at the program availability page. Um, you can see on this slide and, and check to see which programs essentially on that page are currently open or available for upcoming intakes. 
so by either completing a search for program availability on the BCIT website, just at bcit.ca, um, this, this page will allow individuals to pull up a listing showing which programs are currently open to applications versus those that may be closed or waitlisting, especially for the trades programs when it comes to waitlists. Once a program is in mind, so you've selected a program, uh, simply look up that program from the search, um, usually the linked on that page, uh, and you can also search them on the homepage, of course, and click into the entrance requirements section found on the left-hand side of the program uh, page uh, when browsing on a computer. Uh, if you're on a mobile phone, it's a little plus symbol, um, but this allows the view of specific requirements and application timelines out for the pro outlined for the program uh, because those are typically unique from program to program at BCIT. Within BCIT, there are three admissions models. Um, so you'll find them listed under the entrance requirements section. Um, and the three, the three different models, or the first of the three, would be the first qualified or non-competitive. Um, so those are programs that are using non-competitive basis. Uh, there's no formal application deadline dates. Uh, so they'll indicate they'll accept on a first qualified basis until the capacity fills. And uh, we do recommend for these options to apply early. Um, as many of these programs do tend to fill soon after the application process commences. Look, moving on to competitive programs, programs with a competitive application process. These will usually require applicants to have additional courses or skill sets um, as they're outlined as competitive preferences by the department on the program page. Um, so there will be a selection process that occurs and each applicant will compete uh, with other applicants uh, to secure a seat. And we would encourage you to connect with us in program advising if you happen to be interested in a program that has a competitive model uh, to just to obtain more details on strategies uh, to fulfill those preferred requirements or to make yourself more competitive. And the third admissions mo model is a waitlist process. Uh, so this is most common of our trades and technical programs uh, that use this model. For these programs, applications are accepted all year round. So these programs have various start dates or intakes in the year. And wait lists can vary from six months to a year in, in duration. Um, however, for some programs, it could be shorter or longer. Uh, so we've certainly had programs that have had two year wait lists or longer in some rare cases. Let's quickly review the application steps uh, as you're looking at first, you would need to choose a program. Uh, so you need to make that selection process initially. Um, and you then need to make sure that you've spent some time to review those entrance requirements um, because they are, again, program specific. So they'll be unique for each program potentially. Um, you'd also want to check the application processing dates uh, if there happen to be specific timelines that you need to uh, apply within. Uh, and this can also differ from one program to another. It'll also be necessary to convert official transcripts and any additional documents that you may be required to submit into PDF uh, file documents. Um, so there's information under the admissions tab on how to apply to assist applicants preparing their documents for this process. Please also note that individuals must apply using the website. Um, so at this point in time, we still, to my knowledge at least, we haven't presently included ourselves within the Education Planner website, which most institutions are. Um, however, I do believe that this is on, we're in process to resolve this for the future. So you'd hopefully be able to proceed through that uh, internal or central portal eventually. Um, however, within our application process online, applicants can work on filling out the application at their own pace. So you can start an application and return to it at a later time. Uh, the admissions department only receives applications once the payment of the application fee is confirmed. So you've submitted that fee payment, you've gone through all the steps. Um, application fee for domestic applicants is $90, and for international applicants, it continues to be $154. And applications are currently being accepted for programs starting September of 2023 as of early October. So October 1st or October 3rd, I think, is the first business day after the 1st, which is a Saturday. Um, so be uh, at that point in time where you should be able to commence with your applications for next September for the variety, for majority of technology programs, uh, for the trades programs that are usually continuously accepting applications throughout the year. 
And going on further to talk about entrance requirements. So on the right uh, in this in the screenshot here, uh, you can see uh, the details about on the online application that will be submitted. So when you're going through that process online, this is typically what you need to see. Um, so I want to mention that for midterm marks, the majority of our programs will allow you to apply with a midterm grade mark as long as it's sufficient. Um, definitely make sure you double check the entrance requirements. Um, just to make sure that there's no preference outlined if it's a competitive program uh, that they would prefer final grades um, but your midterm grade must meet the percentage grade certainly but specified on the programs page and there is a midterm submission form that is available on the website so you can just search midterm grade and it should come up with that page that has that form final marks if you're applying after your course is, was completed uh, please upload a transcript with your final grades reflected upon it and for some, there may be the opportunity if you're a local student to utilize a grade 11 mark if you're still attending high school. Uh, so high school applicants would generally have this option within uh, local schools in Canada. Um, so they can apply with a grade 11 final mark uh, in the required subject. And um, I'll just use an example. If a person was taking English 12 in the next quarter, they can actually apply with their grade 11 mark as long as it's sufficient. And then they just simply need to show proof that they have their grade 12 English uh, on their timetable. So they would provide both the transcript as well as some reference to the timetable showing that that subject is registered. And then going on to talk about use of post-secondary marks. If someone is a post-secondary applicant, they can use the high school or post-secondary courses to fulfill high school entrance requirements. Uh, so for example, if your program requires physics 12 with 67%, an individual can apply with 67% or higher in physics 100 or higher with a three credit post-secondary physics course. Um, so there's some additional details that our admissions department has outlined within the equivalency section on our website that addresses specific use of post-secondary marks. So I encourage everyone to take a look at that. Going on to talk about international uh, grades or marks, um, if a prospective applicant has completed high school or post-secondary outside of Canada, um, that individual can propose the high school and or post-secondary courses to meet the entrance requirements at BCIT. So there's also some equivalencies specific uh, to this that are outlined by the admissions department on the website as well. Um, and please note that an international credential evaluation is not required when applying to a program with high school entrance requirements. Um, it's only required if identified on the program page. And this is commonly when the program requires post-secondary education, for example, an advanced program such as environmental health uh, towards their bachelor program. Individuals can apply with secondary or post-secondary official transcripts or both. Um, if the transcript is in a language other than English, uh, we would ask that you please submit an official translation of the original transcript from a certified translator. Details can be found within the admissions uh, information on the website specific to that uh, process. Please note English courses are acceptable only if the language of instruction in, is English and the high school education was completed in an English speaking country where English is the primary language um, and it's identified on the website. Uh, if, if that doesn't have to be the case, applicants would typically be required to write an assessment test or undertake an upgrading course or courses. Going on to the next slide. So here's some information about the average tuition program for programs at BCIT. Uh, many options can be explored specific to financial aid and awards if you need additional support uh, or to cover the costs of attending a program at BCIT. So I'd encourage you to explore their website um, and make contact with them as necessary. Please also note though that tuition amounts do change annually. So it sh they should be referenced on the website uh, for the most up-to-date information. And typically there's a cost and supply section on the program pages with links uh, to the tuition uh, details. At BCIT, we do offer both full-time and part-time study options. Uh, so if you choose a full-time program, you'll actually be automatically enrolled into your courses each term. You'll also be taking an, an intensive course load. Therefore, you'll need to be prepared with excellent study and time management skills. And with full-time programs, you could be starting your career in one to two years, so a short time frame to typically uh, have the opportunity to start accessing the uh, employment field. Within part-time studies, you're given a little bit, you're more in the way of flexibility. 
Um, so you can take a single course or work towards a credential at a pace that's right for you. And there are some unique programs that are only offered within part-time studies. Do you please note though that not all full-time programs are available part-time and vice versa. So that's an important note uh, to be aware of. If you think you need accommodation to take less courses within a full-time program, if you happen to be accepted into one, um, we would encourage you to make contact with your department or possibly the accessibility services department, depending on your situation. Um, in some cases, people need that additional support, um, but we have a number of ways that we can try and uh, regulate that depending on the program. And I'd like to, let's see here, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So make sure note in there. So I do wanna mention some additional details about part-time studies because they're a great opportunity to explore um, different options and, and might give you an, uh, a, a better idea of what you wanna pursue on a full-time basis. So I just wanna mention that traditionally part-time studies was primarily geared for working professionals looking to upgrade or pivot their careers. Um, while there are courses and programs designated for those with professional work experience, part-time studies has the ability to serve a wider population, including high school students in their exploration phase, or really anyone that's, that's trying to explore a different option, um, potentially either in part-time studies or in towards full -time, a full-time studies program option. So prior to selecting that full-time program that you wanna pursue, um, you know, take a course, determine your comfort level for that specific area of study based on a course or two, uh, and then make that decision what your, your next step would be. Um, with respect to accessibility, uh, anyone that wants to attend a part-time class uh, that's 16 years or older can proceed to register. Uh, there's a ton of introductory courses or entry-level programs that are open uh, enrollment. And there's no formal prerequisites or entry requirements within part-time studies programs for the most part. Um, there is, however, an expectation that all part-time studies students have a grade 12 English proficiency. However, most programs do not require proof of this. So as long as an individual has strong competencies within reading, writing, speaking, and listening, they should have the opportunity to succeed within the classes that they proceed with. Uh, this, op this option also provides an excellent opportunity for students to take post-secondary courses that would normally maybe be restricted uh, or only for a student that's accepted to a specific program within a college or university. Um, so primary examples being things like uh, some of our programming classes or specific business courses that are offered at BCIT. And so for exploration, again, people can take a course within a subject to figure out if it's something they enjoy uh, before they commit to a program or take multiple courses in different areas. Um, there's certainly instances where students spend an entire year within a program only to realize that they don't really like the major that they chose. Um, so by taking an individual course or courses, a student could spend a few hundred dollars and maybe a shorter period of time, four months or, or so, uh, instead of thousands of dollars in a whole academic year committing yourself uh, to that. And then with respect to flexibility, most courses offered in part-time studies are held in the evenings and weekends. So it doesn't conflict as commonly with uh, those with daytime activities, uh, whether it's someone still involved in high school or an individual working on a full-time basis. Um, so students have the freedom to choose how many courses they register for at one, at one point in time or in a semester, uh, depending on their personal schedule. And typically academically, there's no minimum or maximum course load. Uh, specific to part-time studies. Uh, typically the courses are offered or are completed with a three to five years uh, if it's towards a BCIT part-time program. Um, and if they happen to apply to the full-time programs, uh, if they're equivalent, then, then that may be a benefit as well to reduce the course load. Um, I'd like to highlight some courses and programs that'll be suited for pursuit in part-time studies to take, whether you're deciding on what to pursue for full-time um, to apply to, or, or otherwise it may just be a jumping point to proceed into part-time studies. Whatever pathway you choose, choose is going to be the one that's right for you, right? So, so some of the common business courses uh, that may be transferable to universities and could apply towards a full-time program uh, for the first year um, or completion towards a part-time credential at BCIT. Um, so the, to reference a few We've got courses like organizational behavior, which is a pretty common course. So just covering influence of people and how companies are organized or structured. 
Um, you've also got basic marketing courses covering key topics such as product price place promotion, along with marketing strategies uh, based on research and understanding the marketing environment and customers. Um, I quite liked the marketing course, um, but as, as we move on, you'll get a sense of, you know, if you took a marketing course and you really liked it, maybe marketing would be the right pathway for you. Uh, taking a course like BSYS 1001, which is focusing on commonly used software programs used in businesses. Um, so that's what's covered in the course, addressing technology issues and challenges faced when using these software programs. Um, you might be more inclined towards business innovation technology management within the school business. Um, or if you are really excellent uh, with the mathematics uh, for business math for OPMT 1110, uh, this course addresses financial management applications, consumer and commercial credit, um, simple and compound interest, financial instruments and discounting, annuities, mortgages, loans, sink, sinking funds, uh, leases, depreciation methods, a whole bunch of things that I myself as a first year business student struggled with. So um, hopefully if that's something you're, you're more inclined towards and you're more uh, aligned towards, uh, maybe something within the financial management realm uh, would be something you'd want to pursue. And moving along, we'll talk about a few courses in the broadcast area. Um, so there, there are often courses that permit individuals to proceed towards sampling into areas such as television and video production, radio arts and entertainment, as well as broadcast and online journalism. So a course such as BCST 1002 has a focus on individuals that will fulfill roles such as artists, producers, promoters, uh, key to the industries of broadcasting, especially as support uh, in, in a lot of cases there. Just keep that slide up for one more second here. Shift along, talk about a few of the courses in digital arts and design. So within the Adobe Creative Cloud, there are plenty of courses that can be explored towards creative content and design as listed here. Uh, see if your passion lies within the realm of design, uh, work from a computer or laptop, tablet, cell phone, or other devices to utilize uh, towards creation of digital world of media studies. So uh, if you're a little bit more creative in that way, uh, you may want to get touch into some of these courses and explore some of the full-time programs that are offered in our business and media uh, full-time studies as well. And then when considering computing courses, it's important to ensure that you've either got a key course such as Comp 1002, Applied Computer Concepts, making sure that's completed, or that you as an individual have uh, possessed the equivalent knowledge associated with that course. Uh, essentially, that's the foundation to moving along with the rest of the computing courses within the part-time studies. Um, and it'll give you a sense of whether you have, you know, the right, the right uh, abilities and, and cover level for the basics of computing before you shift along to a more intense course, perhaps like program fundamentals. Um, but each of the following core courses um, are at an introductory level and they're designed to determine your interest, whether it's in different aspects of computing and IT, um, database specific web development, programming and so on. And then within the area of engineering, there are also several subjects uh, at a more introductory level uh, that can be explored to delve into the basics of drafting, determine whether your interest uh, may be towards a specific full-time engineering program, uh, or whether you want to explore some of the options that are available within part-time studies. Uh, so getting involved in some of the drafting courses, be it specific to mechanical or just a general CAD course. And finally, looking at the trades. Um, so there's not a lot typically usually offered in the part 10 studies for the trades, but if you're wanting to see if the railway industry perhaps is appealing to you, or what about maybe welding, um, you could perhaps spark something, some interest, uh, consider proceeding with a foundation program as a result of completing one of these two courses. Um, there's also a conductor self-assessment that's available on the Railway Conductor Operations Program page. Um, so it might be worthwhile checking out um, to see if you might be interested in that field. And just, I think a last slide, just to talk about part-time studies before I move along. Um, if you do choose to explore part-time studies, you can start as soon as possible. Uh, the first step is to simply register for courses. Uh, registration takes place um, in January, uh, April, and uh, September is when the, the courses commence. Um, and for the winter term upcoming in January, um, there should be details specific to registration. It can be found on the website, uh, searching key term, like the a key term such as key registration dates. 
Um, and typically for part-time studies, the tuition would be the sum of individual courses. So you'll see the individual course costs listed um, when you look up the course. And there are student loans available, um, but usually it's uh, for students that are enrolled in, a, in certain part-time programs. So maybe having to designate or uh, declare yourself towards a program to be eligible for the funding and support. Um, and then sometimes you'll, taking part-time courses will instead help you decide on a full-time program, as I mentioned. Um, and you might move towards a credential through either pathway, um, but more information can be found on the BCIT website, uh, or you could discuss it with one of our colleagues during an upcoming information session, such as the Big Info on campus. BCIT offers many different uh, types of credentials. Uh, so they're designed to complement specific education, work experience, and career goals. Many programs provide students with the unique opportunity to advance their education and skills at an accelerated pace, getting to proceed into a career more quickly. For example, starting with a certificate and finishing with a degree can be an option. This progressive laddering model allows someone to build on their education to suit their individual needs one step at a time. If you're unsure of the options that are valid, and if someone wants to know more about the laddering opportunities, please uh, reach out to us and connect with us in the program advising department. And moving away from the academics, I'd like to let you know a little bit more about the student services available um, to those that are coming to campus. Um, some of the department resources include confidential counseling, fitness classes, safe spaces for students, accessibility services, online academic support, and more. Uh, some important student supports I'd like to mention are as follows. Just give me one second here. So the Accessibility Services Department is committed to providing assistance to students with permanent or temporary disabilities. If someone has been accepted to a program and believe that they may need accommodation to be successful, we would ask that you please connect with that department uh, to inquire further. The Counseling and Student Development Department are, are also available uh, to help enhance educational performance and maximize success as a student at BCIT. So they've been offering um, uh, contact back on campus um, so you can reach out to them if you need additional support, uh, especially if you're questioning if, if the program that you're in is, is right for you or if you need some uh, assistance with uh, time management or um, uh, specific to study skills, things like that, they can often support those uh, purposes. Um, if you happen to be of an Indigenous background, BCIT Indigenous Initiatives is here for you to ensure a smooth transition into your first year. They offer peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, a welcoming gathering place, and provide clarification on Indigenous funding options. BCIT Student Health Services is a health clinic located on the Burnaby campus and they actually provide medical care for current BCIT students year-round. Um, and they are providing supports on campus presently, both with nurses as well as they usually have rotating physicians that are available. I would also encourage you to review BCIT awards, scholarships, and bursaries that are listed on our financial aid and awards webpage. Uh, for many, awards selection is based on academic achievement. However, some also look at volunteer and community service. And finally, I'll mention recreation services. Uh, this department, uh, they offer recreational support leagues, a worker facility, as well as classes and a wide variety of services that students can get involved in to free their mind from their studies. So that's an important one. Step away from the classroom and get involved. Oh, I might have, oh, there we go, sorry. Um, throughout the year, uh, the opportunity to dive deeper into learning about a program or its outcomes I would recommend that prospective applicants consider attending a program specific information session um, in addition to some of these general sessions uh, and check out some of the informative videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, oftentimes there's videos on the program pages or different areas of the website, uh, but going to the channel will give you a better opportunity to explore all of them if they're available or search for a specific one. Um, and they're just a great opportunity or great resource to learn about BCIT and, and the programs. There's other ways to connect and learn more about BCIT um, with, uh, or about our community by following certain aspects of social media, things like Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, but certainly, I would encourage you to reach out to us, uh, take a look at the viewbook, 
um, check out that campus campus highlights video. Um, a lot of great opportunities uh, to check out different aspects of ECIT. And certainly, again, firing this home, please do not hesitate to contact us in program advising. Um, within our department, questions come up. Um, if you're unsure about something, um, you've researched on the website and you still need a bit more clarification on it, um, make contact with us. Um, we can, we're typically going to answer questions regarding entrance requirements, the application process, student resources, success strategies, program schedules, and many other details as well. And in some instances, we will need to consult an academic area or other departments before providing uh, a final answer, um, especially to certain complicated situations. So we do appreciate your patience in, in some of those situations. Uh, for full-time studies inquiries, we are available to assist via telephone, email, or during a drop-in session, whether that be in person or virtually. Uh, we recommend checking our advising webpage at bcit.ca forward slash advising for our most up-to-date contact information and service periods. Also feel free to inquire about booking an in-person or virtual appointment uh, with a part-time studies advisor uh, by calling the main line at BCIT uh, to arrange that. And of course, again, you can uh, send specific questions to program underscore advising at bcit.ca by email, uh, and then we'll be happy to assist you in that way as well. And I believe I am at the questions and answer period. Um, so I'd like to try and make sure that I could see the Q&A section in case anybody's fired in any questions. It looks like my colleagues have been answering many of the questions that have come in. Yes, I'd like to take another Jesse. sip of water here. We have been answering various <laughs> questions. Uh, maybe one that we can just clarify is that applications for full-time programs starting fall of 2023, this year open October 3rd. I'm not sure if we mentioned October 1st, but it's October 3rd because that's the first business day of the month. Um, and let's see if there's anything. Maybe, Jesse, if you want to just clarify applying with uh, midterm grades and or applying with grade 11 marks if a student is currently enrolled in the subjects? Yeah, for sure. So um, there's there's actually a high school applicant section on the website uh, that does cater a little bit more to high school applicants in the way of use of grade 11 marks. Um, but it's, it's in a scenario where you're planning to apply to a program and you've got say physics 12 as a requirement for the program you're trying to pursue, but you don't have that you're not set to take that into your final term in high school. So you're going to look back at your physics 11 mark, make sure that you have the appropriate minimum percentage. Um, and then we would have you provide a transcript that reflects that along with that proof uh, that you have the physics 12 registered for your final term uh, in high school. And then subsequently, uh, use of midterm grades, which is open typically to anyone as long as the program permits it, um, you can Go onto the website, search midterm grades. Uh, there's also a section uh, or a link on most program pages that says read more about how to meet BCIT's entry requirements. And within there, you'll find use of midterm grades. Um, so there's uh, a form that you can provide to your teacher or instructor uh, to fill out that'll include all the details that we're looking for in the admissions department. Um, or there's other instructions there that specify uh, the particular details that are needed. Uh, but again, it's a similar scenario where you need to make sure you've covered at least 50% of the course content and you've achieved the appropriate grade, minimum grade, that's outlined on the BCIT program page uh, to be able to submit that and allow it to approve that requirement. Well, I can see a few more questions coming in. That's good. Great. Thanks, Jesse. And while you're maybe going to read, there's one I've just sort of tagged as us answering live. I also sort of want to address a question that came in earlier about work experience for one of our programs. And you may find that there's a number of our programs where they do ask for work experience, but quite often that requirement is asked along with some others as well. So sometimes you may have, for example, if we're asking for work experience, related post-secondary, um, a specific GPA, you may have all three of what we're looking for in the preferred section. But in some cases, you may not have all three. 
And so I would still encourage you to apply because as mentioned, it's really how you match up against the pool of applicants applying that year. So if it's a preferred requirement, if you have the time to work on it, please do work on it. Take the opportunity um, to gain the experience if you can. If you're not sure what kind of experience, connect with us and we can assist you with that. But we just want to let you know that if you do meet the actual formal requirements, it is um, worth applying because the pool of applicants change from year to year. And once again, we can assist you further with that in advising. Just scrolling through, I definitely clicked on one to answer live here. Um, there was a question about uh, applying for a non-competitive program and getting accepted, uh, whether there was the opportunity to defer by one year to hold the acceptance offered. Um, for, for the most part, if you're applying for a competitive program and you've been you've gained acceptance, um, there wouldn't be the opportunity to necessarily defer it. Um, you could certainly inquire with the department. Uh, however, I believe in most cases, you'd be required to withdraw your acceptance and reapply for the following year. Um, and especially as Manager, I believe just mentioned, um, the competitive group for the application process can change uh, from year to year. Um, and so that uh, would require you to submit that application again. And certainly if there's additional documentation that strengthen your application even further, uh, then you'd have that opportunity to submit that. There's a question about the course schedule for full-time. Is it typically Monday to Friday, nine to five? Um, around those hours, for majority of our full-time programs, it is a, a fairly full week, full day. There are some days that the students may get off a little bit earlier, or they may start their days a little bit later, but you can expect a pretty full week and day of courses. Um, in the trades programs, they typically start a little bit earlier. Usually classes start at 7.30 and go till about 2.30. I also wanted to answer the question about transferring from BCIT to different universities and colleges? This is a great question. Some programs at BCIT have an actual sort of partnership set up with specific universities, where if you complete a two-year program at BCIT, you may get direct credit into a specific degree at a university. And it varies from university to university. We have agreements with anywhere from, you know, the BC universities to universities out east as well. But what we always like to tell students is that we are very different. So don't assume that you can study at BCIT and transfer to any institution that you would like to transfer to or transfer into BCIT and get credit for all of the courses you may have done somewhere else. So this is something we recommend you speak to us about if you're interested in transferring into BCIT or out of BCIT. We do have a great deal of information that we can share with you and let you know if that's possible, depending on where you're coming from or where you would like to go. I'll just, just a moment here, just waiting for another response. Um, so I've got, I'm just, this is live. Uh, I've got a question about an international applicant interested in diploma and computing full time. Um, actually, refinished. Did not have any math courses. What options are available? So, there there are certainly options to complete upgrading um, on the program pages. Again, as I mentioned before, you'll see a link that says "Read more about how to meet BCIT's entry requirements," and there is an upgrading section within there. Um, so that does address the opportunity to complete upgrading where there's options at BCIT for individual upgrading courses um, or through our technology entry program, uh, which offers upgrading for math, English, and a couple of sciences, physics and uh, chemistry, uh, or externally through adult education. Um, and then there's also the equivalency section that addresses use of post-secondary credit courses. Um, so you can take a look at uh, the options that are outlined there as well um, for proceeding with math upgrading specifically or, or other uh, academics. Let's see here. Great job on, on submitting questions, everyone. Yeah. They're coming in fast and furious. 
maybe I'll answer the one about applying um, to either full-time or part-time if coming straight from high school. There really isn't um, uh, really one answer to this question. It, it depends. It's very dependent on you, the student, what option works best for you. There are some programs where you actually don't have the choice. So some programs are only offered full-time and some programs are only offered part-time. If a program that you're interested in does have an option to start full time as well as part time. And if you're concerned about the workload in full time, you could start off in part time by taking a few courses and see if you'd like to stay part time or if you'd like to maybe apply for full time in the future. You can get some transfer credit if you do take that option of starting part time and going into full time. But there can be some limitations of how many courses you can take in advance, which courses are recommended by the department. And so if you'd like to discuss that further, that's something we can assist you with in program advising, help you create a plan of either starting part-time, going into full-time, or discussing with you if that option is available for your program. And so please connect with us for that type of question. There's another one further down the list I'm going to try and come back to, but I definitely flagged one to answer it live. Or was it here? So an, inter an international student that has completed English uh, English writing class uh, within a two-year college in the United States. Um, question of whether there's still a need for an English score such as TOEFL. Um, so there's there's certainly the two components for most programs uh, to compensate for the English, uh, the two years of education in English from an English-speaking country. Um, so the United States would certainly uh, fall within that category. Um, and what the admission department has outlined is typically they're looking for 12 academic courses completed uh, within a two year time frame. And so we'd be looking for within that two year time frame that you were studying, you have at least 12 academic, sorry, 12 academic courses uh, to show that you uh, obtained a competency in speaking and listening for English. As well, we'd be looking for a three credit course that falls into social science, social uh, humanities or English, I believe it's outlined on the program pages. Um, so they do clarify further if you click the link, different, the different subject matter that is acceptable to prove the reading and writing component or the English 12 uh, from a college or university. Um, but also, like I said, there's further details specific to the, how you compensate for the two years of education in English. Um, so you'll typically see there's a link below that says, what if I don't meet these English requirements? So clicking into that and then the subsequent links will help to clarify that further. Um, or we'll certainly reach out to us uh, to have a conversation or communicate directly with us in program advising or to clarify your specific situation. Doing here, okay. I'll quickly answer a question about uh, full-time courses or, or perhaps programs I think it's referring to um, are available for masters in, I think it was meant to say computing um, or computers. Uh, so BCT presently offers master's level programming within the building sciences, digital media. There's, there's not a lot of master's options that are offered at BCIT. Uh, there's also some graduate certificates that are essentially pathways towards master programs, uh, but we as an institute do not offer a lot of options at this moment in time uh, at the master's level. Uh, however, keep an eye on the website because things are ever changing and more and more options uh, seem to come about year after year. Um, so there may be a future uh, master's program within the computing area. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Uh, to quickly address this question about student loans, does the government normally cover the tuition amount? Um, so it depends on the program, and we definitely recommend that you consult the financial aid office. Um, there, there are certainly um, 
many programs where the full tuition, I believe, is compensated for uh, through the process of applying for student loans uh, and other uh, forms of funding, such as bursaries, may be available, um, or you might explore some of the awards that may be available. So uh, definitely will depend on the program. Uh, one program I'll make comment on is our pilot program, uh, where there's uh, extra fees associated with the flying time. And so the student loans may compensate for the tuition, however, the flying time is quite expensive. And so that's not necessarily covered by student loans to my knowledge. So up there. Good. Jesse, I'll take the question um, about applying for electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. So if a program hasn't specified a recency requirement, and you'll notice some programs will state that the requirements have to be completed within the last five years, or preference is given to applicants who completed requirements within a certain time period. If it doesn't indicate that, then you can apply using courses from the 90s, for example, here. However, we would recommend, for example, a program like electrical engineering, that if the last time you took courses in math and physics and chemistry was in the 90s, that you do consider taking some refresher courses and either you can do the entire particular course over again, or you can take some uh, refresher courses that we offer in the summer in preparation for our engineering programs. But we would definitely recommend you do something in preparation for the full-time program. I should mention though, you can go ahead and apply with your courses that you did complete at that time. So you can submit your application and be offered a seat based on that. And then while you're waiting for the program to start to do your upgrading. Just responding, looks like there was some indication that we might be holding or there was some ability to connect to an information session in Indonesia. So uh, I was just trying to respond. I wasn't aware of there being any in-person information sessions um outside of canada or bc necessarily um but uh perhaps there was reference to attending on a virtual basis there so um the I, I will quickly touch on there's a question of are there any benefits to early applications so certainly we would encourage students to apply early um, the trades programs because they work on a wait list uh, it's definitely important to be added to that waitlist early. Uh, the trades programs do also usually offer an opportunity to defer. So if you happen to be, for instance, a high school applicant and you were accepted to an intake that was prior to you graduating from high school, then you could contact admissions to inquire about deferring to a later date. Um, but also with uh, full-time technology programs, applying early can be important uh, because there is a certain capacity and a lot of the programs do have a tendency to be popular. And so the students that apply early and are able to prove their requirements have a greater opportunity to be offered acceptance uh, prior to the class in program filling up. And I'll try and touch on scheduling a campus visit. I believe we are starting to get back to doing a lot more on campus events and so on. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that there is a link on the homepage at bcit.ca uh, that is uh, specific to setting up a campus visit. Um, it will either identify within that link that we are still not yet back to doing campus visits, or it will identify how you can uh, enter your details uh, so that we can arrange you to come to campus and uh, take a tour uh, or, or otherwise visit a specific program and get involved as a student for a day if that's become available again. And I think my colleagues are just answering a couple last minute questions. We don't have much more time before we wrap up the session. So um, I'll quickly try and answer. So what is the deadline for application? So again, it depends on the individual program. Uh, competitive programs will outline a specific application deadline or deadlines. Other first qualified programs or more commonly trades programs will have an application process that's a first qualified basis. Um, so you first apply if you approve the requirements and if there's a seat available uh, at that point in time, then uh, we will offer acceptance uh, or accept you to the wait list if it's a trade program um, and we'd be then potentially accepted to the next intake. 
um, or you can clarify with the admissions officer. And how many times a year is a new intake done? So again, most of our programs, the majority of technology programs at least, will, will have one intake a year. So they will commence in September. Um, there are some other programs that are only commencing in January, for instance, like um, the medical radiography program or magnetic resonance imaging. And then you have other programs that have multiple intakes in the year, like nursing, that is a January, April, September intake. So nursing being competitive, as well as the other two medical programs I mentioned, will have specific application deadlines that are outlined on the program page uh, for your reference. And I'm pretty sure we can keep on going through the whole night. Uh, I've got a couple more questions and then I think we're going to have to wrap up the session. Uh, and James, just to mention, um, I would I would certainly reach out to the, the group at the International Department. Um, certainly, yes, they may be doing some recruiting uh, internationally that I'm unaware of. Hopefully there is that session that steps to take place in Indonesia. Um, and with respect to, again, dates to get admission into all intakes or semesters, I would encourage you to take a look at the program availability page as a central point to reference um, the different intakes for the programs. Uh, so they will all be in that list as well as their current uh, availability whether they are still accepting applications, they're closed, if they're waitlisting. Um, so take a look there. And and so again, a lot of general questions. If again, it's very important to First, you need to select a program, and because those requirements are going to be unique, the application period may be unique. Um, it's important to look at those details in the entrance requirement section on the specific program page of what you're hoping to pursue. Um, otherwise, we don't have a lot in the way of general studies, um, so we're not going to we're not going to have a, a common application deadline as as some other colleges and universities may. And I think with that. Not sure what time is exactly. We're a couple minutes after six. I think we'd probably better wrap up the session unless Beninder wants to answer another question before we go. Yeah, I just saw one that's come in about if I get rejected or not accepted into one full-time program, can I still apply for another in the same year? So that once again, another good question that that could be possible. So if you've applied for a particular program and you were not successful in getting a seat and applications are still open for other programs, it is possible to be considered for programs if applications are still open. So that, that definitely is a possibility. And you can connect with us and we can let you know how to, or at that point really you'll be connecting with the admissions department. And um, sometimes you can apply using the same application fee, but we won't, that just depends on the situation and what type of program you're applying to. We got more questions coming in about the English. How long does the course last and is it available online? There are a, a few English courses, programs at BCIT, depending on your situation. Um, I believe I, I got the understanding that you were inquiring from overseas. So you may be applying as an international student. If, if one of your questions mentioned that, in, in that case, you'll be going into a full-time program, and the length of that program really depends on where you're starting the program. So it could, it could go be anywhere from three months to six months to a year, depending on where you are starting and what English level you are coming in with. Brilliant. And on that note, I think we're just about finished typing up some response to the last couple of questions. I want to thank everyone for attending the session uh, tonight. 
I uh, greatly appreciate it. And I hope that you'll reach out to us in program advising if you have additional questions. And everyone have a great night. Thanks very much. Cheers.